like dead men cluttering up my place. I want him out of here. You better shut that trap of yours or you'll be joining him. So you close this mob, so what? They know you were in on the theater job. You're as good as caught right now and with an extra murder to your credit. Ah, quit needling me. You're just no good. For me, for yourself, or anybody else. That's it, Steve. Destroy everything and everybody. It's your style. Face it, Vic. You're as finished as the kid is. I wasn't in on your job. I'm not in trouble. Why should I stick around and take what's left? What is left? A has-been with a gun. A has-been? Baby, I've only just begun. I didn't set you up in all this luxury just to have you walk out on me. I pulled you out of that Main Street dive and made something out of you. No, you're not gonna walk out on me. Try it and I swear you'll never walk out on anyone again. So if they do pick me up, it's only a robbery rap. I didn't kill that cop. Nobody will know about the kid there. That's better, baby. I knew you wouldn't walk out on me. Oh, big honey, what are we going to do? I don't want you to go to jail. I ain't going to jail. How can you be so sure? Some will turn up. It always does. Too bad your face is in their files. Vic, Vic, what is it? You hit it, baby. You hit the solution right on the head. My face. I couldn't find him anywhere. He didn't keep his promise to you. What he must be going through. Don wouldn't lie to me about a thing like this. He left my office to give himself up. And unless he has been forcibly detained, he would have done so. I looked everywhere I ever heard him mention. No one has seen him today. Only I knew where Vic Brady lived. He won't be showing his face around here either. The inspector may take me. He knows that I helped Don this morning, and he wasn't happy about my actions. Maybe if I talk to the inspector. No, that's no good. Because as he said to me, I am an accessory after the fact. But, but your practice. It'll be ruined. Oh, Don, Don. How could he do such a thing? My life means little to me now. It's Don that we must think of. He didn't think much of us. But we must think of him. Yes, this is Dr. Gregor. Who? Yes, yes, I understand. I... But I must have assistance. This thing is a physical impossibility to do by myself. I... All right. Seven o'clock this evening. Yes. Yes, yes. Goodbye. Who was it, Father? That's Brady. He's got done. He gave me an address. I have to be there at 7 o'clock this evening. I'm going to call Inspector Johns no, right away. No, no. No, Brady says he'll kill Don if we notify the police. So this time we've got to play the game his way. Marilyn, do you remember your nurse's training? Bob, why don't you do your shaving at home? Well, I hold long enough to do it. <laughs> you got a point there. There he was, Inspector. Right in our hands, we didn't get him. Uh, I think the doctor was only doing what he thought was right. You gonna bring him in? Well, perhaps later. He's not the type to run out. Have you found out anything more about where Brady is staying? Yeah, he hasn't been back to his apartment in three days. Oh. I got some men stationed around there, and some others following up some new leads. He's covered his tracks pretty well. Well, what about the woman angle? If there is one, he's kept it pretty far in the background. It isn't going to be as easy as we think. Well, I didn't think it was going to be easy. Bob, well, since uh, it's night time and uh, technically you're off duty, why don't you hop in that new used car of yours and take a run out to the Gregor home? You know, she's a mighty pretty girl. Funny you mention it, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> Mental telepathy. Go on, get out there and have a look around. 
You think he might be hiding out there? Oh, he's too smart for that, but he might try to contact them. I'm sure the doctor will tell you if he has. And uh, as I said, she's a mighty pretty girl. Blonde's a voice in my weakness. <laughs> Go on, get started. And uh, Bob, being a pretty girl, don't take any chances. Don Gregor is a killer. Okay, Inspector. Lieutenant Lauren. I just thought I'd drop by. Have you heard from Don? We'd have called you if we had. Well, do you mind if I stop in a minute? As a matter of fact, I do mind. I have to go out and I'm already late. Well, that's too bad. I thought I could be of some help. Help? By involving my father in this? Miss Gregor, if you just stopped to realize, you'd see that it wasn't the police that's involving your father. Good night, Lieutenant Lauren. No. Are we ready? Yes. Oh, I've forgotten my purse. You go ahead to the car, Father. I'll be right along. Right. This is Dr. Grigger. Oh, come in. I thought I told you to come alone. My daughter is a nurse. I need her assistance. Okay. But I don't like my orders disobeyed. My daughter is just as concerned over the life of my son as I am. I need trained assistance. My daughter is that assistance. And if it's going to be done, she will help. If not, then your life is in your own hands. Oh, come on, Vic. Calm down. She's a sister. She's not going to do anything out of line. Yeah, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Shut up, you. Okay, Doc. What do we do? I'll show you. Take off your shirt and your shoes and stretch out on this couch. You know, this can be a very dangerous operation, done in such a crude manner. Doc, I've got little chance this way. 
I got a better chance the other. You're gonna give me a completely new face. With a new face, nobody could ever identify me as having been near that theater. It'll be like a new life to me. So let's get going. What do I do? All right. What's that for? To put you to sleep. I'm ready for your tricks. Well, you couldn't withstand the pain or stay rigid as you must if you were awake. Oh, Vic, honey, do what the doctor says. Shut up, you. Okay. So I gotta go to sleep. Keep the gun on him. One false move and you let him have it. Get me? Yeah, yeah. Sure, Vic. You'll be all right. I'll see to that. You hear that, Doc? She'll do it, too. Further than that, you don't know where your son is. I do. If those that are holding him don't hear from me by morning, you'll never see him alive again. I understand. And I promise you that no harm will befall you if you will do as I tell you. And, Doc, don't forget, it's your son that's wanted for murder, not me. Let's get on with it. All right. Lie down. Just be careful, Doc. Keep track of his pulse while I'm gone. You're not going any place. I'm going to the kitchen to get some hot water. I guess that's okay. I assure you that it is quite necessary. Go ahead, I'll be right behind you. That won't be necessary. The telephone is in this room. I can go nowhere. I can do nothing. Okay. Go ahead. Father isn't going to do anything. He loves his son too much. Vic told me not to take any chances, and that's just what I'm going to do. Where is your father? He's been gone long enough to get ten basins of water. My father knows what he's doing. That's more than I think you do. I'll overlook that remark because you're needed here. But when this thing is finished, I'm... Oh, what's the use? Why don't you relax? Relax? Listen, you, I love that man, and I'm not taking any chances. Love. I don't think you know what love means. If you did, you wouldn't feel that way about a cheap gunman like Vic Brady. Cheap? Cheap? Take a look at this place, sweetheart. Does this stuff look cheap to you? There's not a cheap bone in his body. So where will it all end? What are you going to do in a couple of years when that pretty face is gone? I'll worry about that when the time comes. You'd better, because he won't. He doesn't strike me as the sweet and gentle type. Oh, he does get rough once in a while. I did leave him once. But you came back. On the first bus. Why? I told you. I'm in love with him. Take it or leave it. If I were you, I'd leave it. I had a hard time finding a basin. 